Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. This afternoon I'd like to take, to take a few minutes and discuss a common question that we get in Applications Engineering. And that question is, can I shunt calibrate the active strain gauge? So I thought I'd take a few minutes and draw a sketch and let's talk about whether or not it makes sense for you to calibrate the active strain gauge because in some cases it may make sense in other cases you may find it may not. <clears throat> so let's start out with a sketch of our Wheatstone Bridge. So I'm just drawing the corners of the Wheatstone Bridge along with fixed resistors and now I'm going to draw what would be our strain gauge. Okay, so here we have the active strain gauge. We're going to connect three wires from the active strain gauge into the Wheatstone bridge. Instead of pulling the signal connection off of this corner, I'm actually going to connect it another wire out to the tab on the strain gauge. So this circuit is actually a three-wire quarter bridge Wheatstone bridge circuit. So I've got the symbol for a battery and if I label the corners of the bridge I've got P plus at the top, P minus at the bottom. Then I'm going to label the signal output connections. This one is going to be S plus and this one, where if it were tied to this point, would be S minus. And since I've broken that and pushed that wire out to the tab of the strain gauge, technically the S minus connection or signal minus is out at the tab of the gauge. Now, so we've got strain gauge, we've got three wires coming into the circuit. Let's assume the strain gauge is 120 ohms. So in order for this bridge to be balanced, this one happens to be one, or has to be 120. These other two, as long as they're the same, doesn't really matter, but just to make it simpler, let's call these 120, and this one 120. And of course, this is a symbol for a battery, so that's our power, if you will, coming into the circuit. This is our electrical signal out. We can call this E, some folks will call it V. But that's our voltage or excitation coming in. And again, this is the signal coming out. Now, shunt calibration is a method that we use in order to scale this circuit. And a common question we get is, can I shunt calibrate the active strain gauge? And what that would mean is that we would have to take a resistor and connect it here across the tabs of the strain gauge. And typically, you would put a switch in that loop along with the resistor. And if I happen to pick this resistor, let's call this resistor our cow, and oftentimes for a 120 ohm strain gauge, we would pick a resistor that's 59,880 ohms. The reason we pick this resistor is that if you take it and you shunt calibrate it across a 120 ohm strain gauge, that produces a simulated microstrain of 1,000, and that's based on a gauge factor equal to 2. Now, to answer this question, can I shut calibrate the active strain gauge, the obvious answer is yes. You can take this calibration resistor, maybe you put a switch on it, connect it right across the active gauge. So let's talk about advantages and disadvantages. One of the big advantages to shunt calibrating the active gauge is that you're on this side of the lead wire resistance that connects the gauge into your instrumentation. And what that means is that an advantage would be that you can correct for lead wire resistance. That's probably the main reason why you would shunt calibrate 
at the active strain gauge is that you can correct for whatever the influence is of these wires. And I'll just label them as R sub L. <clears throat> Another advantage, and I'm not sure if you'd consider it an advantage or disadvantage, but I'll, I'll call it an advantage. Another advantage is that when you when you shunt this resistor parallel across this active strain gauge, is that it simulates compression. And if you're primarily testing in compression, then I would argue that that's a good thing. You've just simulated a compressive strain, just like the strain gauge would see as it were active. So if there's some advantages, there's probably going to be disadvantages. What would that be? And a disadvantage is that it's not convenient. What do I mean by that? Let's say that you've got 25 strain gauges installed on your structure. And you've got to go out and chunk calibrate each one of them. If you did, what you would find is that it might take you two days to calibrate all of those strain gauges. Where if you were to shut calibrate at some other resistor in the Wheatstone Bridge, you could effectively compensate for the same thing being the wire resistance, and you could also scale the output, but you could do it at a much easier, much more convenient location. Another disadvantage of calibrating the active strain gauge is that the resistance of the gauge, I'm going to call it R sub G, has a higher tolerance. So think of it like this. You're taking a very precise resistor, probably with a tolerance of about a tenth of a percent, and you're connecting it across a strain gauge that's been installed on your part. And these strain gauges are going to have a wider tolerance than the cow resistor. Typically it runs between about 0.2 and about 0.5% tolerance on the resistance. And in addition to that, you may change that resistance as you're installing that gauge on the part. You might find that it goes up some if you're bending it around a, a radius, or you might find that it goes down if you're compressing it down into a fillet. So what you'll find is that R sub G will have a wider tolerance or, in, or shift in the resistance due to just the tolerance as it's provided from the manufacturer as well as any uh, resistance change that's created from installing the strain gauge. So in answer to the question, can I shunt calibrate the active gauge, the answer is yes. It allows you to correct for lead wire resistance, it simulates a compressive strain. And what I would call a disadvantage is that it's not convenient and typically R sub G has a higher resistance tolerance. If you'd like to find out more about shunt calibration, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com and we have a technical note dedicated to shunt calibration. Thank you.